Okay, here we are at one of the properties that we are barricading. We have a contract with the city and we barricade, which is just a fancy name for board up, any property in which the city issues an abatement order on. And that can be a residential property, it can be a commercial property, uh, sometimes schools. And what it is, is you have a property like this, which is in disrepair, and sometimes people are hoarders, uh, sometimes you have drug dealers, uh, criminal activity going on inside and around the property, typically near schools is a big priority for the city. And what we do is we go in and we secure the property so that you can't have transients or drug dealers or anybody in and out of the property. There can be a number of reasons that the properties look this way. A lot of times what we run into is it's people who either pass away or people who just move and they have a property that was left to them or they just don't want it anymore. So they quit taking care of it altogether. So you end up with houses like this. A lot of times they're really nice and um, people just, they leave them. And so you end up with a property that's full of trash and garbage, uh, it can attract vermins, rats. And it's a shame because you see neighborhoods are really nice, like this area where we are, we're not too far from the ocean. And you have a house that you can tell is a beautiful house. It's got a gorgeous tree that if you cut it up six or eight feet, it'd be a beautiful canopy. You could make a great yard. And it's um, due to the legal restrictions and what you run into here in California, it would probably be the same in other states and other cities outside of Los Angeles. It just gets bogged down in legal hell. So you have these great properties that you can't do anything with because you might have family members who are fighting over it, or you might have an owner of the house that you just can't find. There can be a lot of different reasons, but there are a ton of properties like this, I think in any major city, and it's just a shame, particularly with um, high housing prices. I know a lot of people who would love to be able to buy a property like this and renovate it. Gorgeous tree. And I think if you use imagination, which you don't need much of in this case, you can see how this yard could be really beautiful. So here we are. You can see any of the doorways, any of the windows. We board them up so that people can't get inside. We secure them from the inside, also from the outside, and that prevents people from getting in as much as possible. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, people will still break in, but this is a pretty good deterrent. Again, you look around the back of the building, and I don't know that I would say this is atypical, but honestly, this is a pretty clean property for one that's been abandoned. If you look back here, this is something you run into a lot. You have old cars, um, and they've just been sitting. They've just been abandoned. And you always wonder, what? how did this property get to this condition? And again, you can rack your brain trying to figure it out, but there are a million different reasons. A lot of times we'll come in properties, and you'll see a lot of junk here in the backyard which has to be cleaned out. This house is actually in relatively good shape, even though it's full of stuff on the inside. You can tell if you went on the inside, and sometimes people will say, well, how do you know it's in relatively good shape? So assuming that the foundation is in good shape and I can't see anything on the exterior of the property that would lead me to believe that there are any major foundation issues, you don't see any major cracking, any major shifting. Um, and assuming that the studs are good on the inside, you really could go in, not just this house, but any house, and rip it completely down to the studs. Take all the flooring off, subflooring, certain parts of this, you can tell it has a raised foundation. Um, you take all the drywall off, you replumb the entire house, you put all new electrical, all new HVAC, tile, flooring, everything you want to do to this house and it's going to be a fraction of the cost that it would be to build a brand new house or to buy a house. We use CDX, which is exterior grade plywood. We don't use OSB, anything like that, because that's really easy to get into. But if there are openings, you can see how this was boarded beforehand. We'll take down the old wood and we'll put up new barricades. And a lot of times you'll see that people have tried to board up a house and they have boarded it up, but 
it's really in a substandard way, so it's easy to rip off or easy to break through. The way we do it is much different, so it's really difficult to get in, but again, of course, if you really want to get in, somebody's going to figure out a way. We've had houses that we've boarded up and people have driven cars through them in order to get in, so uh, you, nothing is 100%, but this is a, this is a pretty, pretty solid way that we, we uh, secure these places. And I guess the one thing that we can take from it is, is at least in neighborhoods like this, people are at least glad to see that we're coming in and we're boarding the houses up so that you don't have a lot of activity, be it criminal or just transient activity in or out of the house which particularly when you have kids in the neighborhood and um, older adults and even just middle-aged people you just want a clean safe neighborhood and anything that can be used as a deterrent to keep people out is at least somewhat of a win so it's not the sexiest it's not the most exciting not the most interesting work but we at least tell ourselves we're doing some bit of good and Hopefully in the end, somebody will take a house like this and be able to make a, make a home out of it. Are you guys with a private company or the city or something? So the city, we're the contractor for the city. So they send us out to board up the, um, anytime we have a house like this, there's a house where there's a lot of activity in and out of there. Is there a school nearby? Yeah, so anytime there's a school, there's um, typically for the city, they try and get to as many of them as possible. These are a lot of abandoned houses with activity in and out, but they give special priority when there's a school nearby. So, so if you look here, you can see that on the roof and in the ceiling joist, there's some termite damage, so that would have to be replaced. So you could just go ahead and assume that you're gonna to have to rip off the entire roof and probably replace a lot of the structural members. Up here, the same thing on this overhang, this tongue and groove, you can see that it's been eaten pretty good by termites. But you look around the foundation here on the bottom, everything looks pretty good. It's not the cleanest, but there are no major cracks. Everything looks um, like it's in good shape. So you don't see much damage there. Again, you're probably gonna rip these off anyway, but you can see that there's termite damage there. So that's probably the one big issue you're gonna to have to contend with. But if you look at the, the, the edge metal, the drip edge there on the roof, and depending on where you can see the roof from, it's kind of hard because there's this tree is growing on it, but the roof is in really good shape. Obviously not clean, there are a lot of leaves on it, but from a construction or a structural standpoint, it's not bad at all. Again, I think anyone who comes in and would take a house like this and renovate it, you're gonna wanna put a couple few hundred thousand dollars into it, particularly if, if you got it for a really good price. And it's just a, it's just a good looking house. And this is just one of those, this is just one of those properties that you look at and you, you really wish that it looked worse than this so you wouldn't feel so bad about it. But stucco's not in bad shape. A few cracks on the stucco, but again, stucco is a cementuous material, so you're always gonna have cracks. Stucco always cracks, and none of these are outside of tolerance, so you can't fit a dime or a quarter inside of any of these. Again, it's a really old house, so the fact that it's got this stucco and you just have minor cracks on it, lets me know that it's probably in pretty good shape foundation wise. So your big costs here are gonna be the roof, probably your HVAC system. Um, but this stucco is good enough that you could just patch it in particular areas and probably keep it. Paint job would, would clean it right up. Even the landscaping is not bad. It's a bit overgrown, but you can shape all of this vegetation and it's still in pretty good shape. The front yard, which we looked at, you could replant the grass. Same thing back here, drip irrigation. You put it in, uh, replant it back here, the grass, and it could look really nice. Some people prefer these days to go with turf. I'm not a big fan of turf. It gets hot and sort of looks cheap. But again, if you look at the hardscape back here, there's a crack here. 
but me personally, I would rip all of this up and put new hardscape back here, but you can tell it hasn't moved very much. So that all lets me know that this house is in really good shape in terms of the soil, in terms of the foundation, how it was built. So what can you do?